Hi everyone, it's that time of the year again. It's almost October, which means it's almost Inktober. I don't really remember if I did Inktober last year. I know I was really busy with school. I don't think I did it. I don't think I did Inktober. But I always told myself that when I was done with school and graduated that I would finally have time to fully put, to fully invest my time into Inktober because I usually have other things going on in my life that kind of prevent me from doing Inktober, but this year I don't have school. I don't really have anything else that should get in the way of me doing Inktober. And if you don't know what Inktober is, it is a drawing challenge where you do a drawing in ink every day of the month of October. And I actually made my own prompt list for this. So if you want to follow along with the prompts that I'll be using, I posted it on my Instagram. I'll put it here too. And I kind of made it, I made it critter themed or like animal themed. So each prompt is inspired by a different animal. I put a poll on Instagram for people to give me a bunch of animal suggestions. And originally it was just going to be a list of a bunch of different animals to use as prompts. But I kind of thought that was too limiting and I wanted it to be more open-ended. So instead of just doing animals um, on each day, I took a word that kind of reminded me of each animal, like a word that was inspired by each animal. So each day is a different sort of word that is kind of related to an animal. So it'll be things like fuzzy or jump or scales or bubbles, stuff like that. So I'm going to be using my own list. Feel free to use it as well. Um, you can do the prompts however you want. You don't have to draw animals. You can do whatever you want. And this video is me preparing for Inktober, and I'll kind of tell you the the things that I do and tips that I will, I will share some tips that kind of help me complete Inktober. I think I've only completed the entire challenge maybe once or twice. Um, if things come up, like, you don't, obviously you don't have to draw every single day. You don't have to draw every day to participate in Inktober. It, it really should be, like, open-ended and just to have fun with it. You don't have to be strict on yourself, but if you want to be strict on yourself, that can be fun too. To just completely embrace the challenge, I think that's pretty fun. So you're supposed to draw with ink, um, and there's a lot of people who argue that you're not supposed to use color, you're not supposed to use other stuff, but I don't really care too much. I, I don't think it matters. I think you just want to make it enjoyable for yourself. Some people just do like full colored illustrations, which I think is fine. I mean, ink doesn't have to be black. I, th I think you can really interpret it however you want. I'm going to be using some color. Um, I might use like a, like pencil crayons to sort of shade in areas of my drawings because I don't really want to do pure ink. Um, I want to have more, I think I'll have more fun if I use pencil crayon with it. And I'm not sure if I'm going to do full illustrations or if I'm just going to do sketch pages based on the prompt each day, I think full illustrations would be nice. But what, what what you saw in this video was me taking out all of my black inking pens and kind of getting a feel for, for all of them and making sure they all work. I have lots of brush pens, lots of like bristle brush pens or some felt tip flexible nib brush pens. I also have just some felt tip markers. Um, I'm not sure what my favorite type of brush pen is, but I, I think it is the like the flexible felt tip pens, but the more like hard ones, because if the bristles are too soft, I don't have a lot of control with the brush. It takes a lot of practice to be really good with such a flexible nib. Like the Pentel pocket brush pen, I have that pen and it's pretty hard to control. I mostly just use it to fill in large areas, um, but sometimes it's a nice challenge to try to use that to do an illustration because it is kind of challenging because it's so thick and um, it's so soft that it takes a lot of restraint to keep yourself from making the lines way too big or way too varied. So this video is kind of me preparing for it, just getting a feel for my brush pens, drawing some stuff in ink. I also started a new sketchbook. I don't really like the sketchbook, but for ink, I, li I do like it a lot. Um, it's the moleskin sketchbook. It's It doesn't have the best quality of paper because I think I bought the wrong kind or something. I don't really like moleskin sketchbooks. I'm not a fan of toned paper. I prefer if it's like pure white so that nothing is interfering with your colors and you can just put... It, it, it just photographs better for social media if it's like whiter paper, I think. 
but I, I thought I thought using this sketchbook for Inktober would be good because each page is square. I'm going to be posting on Instagram when the square format works well for Instagram. Um, and it's a nice smooth paper, which is good for pencil, crayon, and ink, and the kinds of stuff I'll be using. Not good for watercolor, but I'll ju I just won't use watercolor in it, I guess. Um, it is good for gouache, though. Not if you really like to water down your gouache like I do, but it does work for gouache. So I am happy that I had this sketchbook. I didn't buy it for this. I've had it for a while because it was like a buy one, get one free thing some kind of deal a long time ago. I did fill one of these sketchbooks in the past um, and I didn't really like it so I haven't used this one yet but I just thought I have it and it's gonna work for Inktober. Gonna be doing the majority of the sketching in this sketchbook will be Inktober stuff, at least the first half of it. So that will be pretty fun. Also, I have the fall package for my Patreon available if you want stickers and a print and a collectible trading card based on different weather patterns. The trading cards I make are little monsters designed off of different weather patterns, so like different types of clouds, fog, um, solar eclipse, all kinds of stuff like that, different storms, everything. Um, all my trading cards are designed around a different weather phenomena and you can get Octobers if you pledge to my Patreon before October 1st to the Greyhound tier or higher. You get this print and stickers as well, so check that out if you want it. You have until the 1st of October. Some tips for Inktober is try to like, try to schedule. What works for me is sort of having a schedule of when I do the drawings. Sometimes I find I have certain times of the day where I'm more creative. I don't like to leave drawing until late at night because I don't really like to work at night anymore. I mean, I do work well at night, but I don't think it's good for my sleep schedule to work at night. I find I have more energy in the morning than in the afternoon, so I'm probably going to try to do all of my Inktober stuff in the morning before I do anything else. It'll just be like a nice warm-up to the day, um, just doing a drawing before I do other work stuff. I think that would be fun, and then I would post it and... Yeah, I might even do them a day early. Well, actually, I don't think I can. Um, another thing is to try not to be too hard on yourself. I'm kind of like a very all or nothing person. It's like I either have to do Inktober every single day perfectly or I'm not going to do it at all. But I think it's okay to like not do it perfectly because there's going to be days where you can't really, where it seems like everything you draw is just not what you want it to be. So I think it's okay to have some days where you just post like sketches or it, it, it's okay to not be happy with the final result. And I, there might even be some days where I don't post the Inktober that I did because I just won't be happy with it. But in an ideal world, I'm going to post every day that I do. Um, but sometimes it just makes you feel bad to be obligated to draw something. You don't feel like drawing. You try to draw. It doesn't work out. And then you have to post it for people to see. Um, I think just avoiding that can just make you feel better and yeah, I think some of my previous Inktober challenges that I did, I would just like not post some days because I just wasn't feeling good about my art and then I would really like what I did the next day. Another thing that might help is sketching out what you want to do in advance. Some people say that's cheating. I say you can't really cheat at this. It's just meant to get you drawing and having fun. I really don't think it's that deep. I don't think it matters too much. And I'm going to be sketching mine in advance. I, I think so. Whatever will help me um, do the challenge as smoothly as possible. Because I do want to draw something every day and post it and then make some prints out of my Inktober stuff. Or maybe a little, a little zine. Who knows? I think that would be cool though. Another thing I've seen people do is they turn it into a story. So every day is like a continuation of the previous day. I'm not really huge on that myself because I'm not really like a comic artist or like a storyteller artist, at least not right now. Um, I do like the idea of it, but it's just not something that I find myself naturally doing. But making like a, a adding like a panel to the story each day could be a good way to do Inktober or adding a page to the story each day. Some people also will just have one piece of paper and they add a little doodle to it each day. I think that is a really nice low commitment way to do Inktober because you're not doing this huge drawing every day and you can like kind of post on your story. The doodle's getting bigger and bigger and then you have this like big illustration at the end of all these little doodles. That actually sounds fun. I kind of wish I was doing that. Maybe I should. 
no, I'm, I'm gonna do a drawing each day. I also found that Inktober really helped my inking skills, and I think I, I ended up enjoying inking stuff a lot more and really getting into like a more hatchy sort of lined style. Was it last year or... I don't remember. Did I do Inktober last year? I gotta check my Instagram. I think I did do it last year. Did I complete it though? Because my Instagram has all these black and white drawings. Yeah, I think, okay, 2019 I did Inktober. I really enjoyed that Inktober. I think I learned a lot and I was really happy with the stuff that I made. Um, there were some days that I didn't post, but that just kind of made me feel better about everything I was doing. I think I even used this exact same sketchbook last Inktober. So this will be kind of cool to use the same sketchbook, same supplies, and see what kind of stuff I can make. Because I, I, did, I did learn a lot that Inktober and I had a lot of fun. Ink can be scary to use. It's so dark and so permanent. But I think an important thing is to try to be confident and bold with your strokes because that will make your drawing just look more tidy and put together. That's easy, easier said than done because it does take practice, practice to achieve um, nice line quality. But I think you learn by doing bad drawings, you learn by experience and drawing every single day for a month in ink, you're bound to get better at it. So try to not be too afraid with the dark ink. Um, maybe add in some supplies that you enjoy using more, like I'm going to be adding in some pencil crayon just to give a little bit of color and texture. I just, I think that would be fun and not make it so completely ink, completely black, because I kind of want to add a bit of color. I want to do it the way that Lowish did it, where she would sketch out her drawing in a colored pencil shade it in with that and then ink over top of it and you get this nice balance of the sketchy lines and the cleaner ink. I think that would be a lot of fun and that would lend itself to my style. So let me know in the comments if you're doing Inktober, if you've done it in the past, what prompts you'll be following. I've seen some people take a bunch of prompt lists and mix up all the days and use their favorite prompts from all the lists and I think that is such a cool thing to do. Because if you don't want to commit to one list, you might as well just take the best of, of all, the best of both worlds, the best of a bunch of different lists and put them together. And then you're just like way more inspired to draw because you picked out your favorite prompts. Also, let me know what your favorite inking pen is to use. Do you, do you use brush and ink? Do you use um, like a fountain pen? Do you use felt tip pens, ballpoint pens, gel pens, all types of stuff. And feel free to join me in my prompt list, Gel-tober. I wanted to call it Jelly-tober or Critter-tober, but those were taken, so now it's Gel-tober, which kind of works out because gel pens have ink, so it's like Gel-tober, gel pens. Um, but you can use whatever you want. J just approach it however you want. The whole idea is to just have fun with art. Um, Inktober has evolved so far beyond what it originally was and it's just it's just cool to see people making art together just for the sake of trying to draw more and trying to push themselves. I think that's always a good thing. So I hope you enjoyed this. I definitely enjoyed preparing for Inktober and I'm excited to see the kinds of stuff I'll make because I was really happy with what I did in 2019 and I think I can do it better this year because I've come a little bit farther in my drawing skills I think. Um, but I have been drawing a lot more animals than people lately, so maybe I'll be a bit rusty with drawing people. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.